None of them will get it. Henry. Hard charging run across the five. Tejon Henry is coming up big to start this half. Yeah. There are two flags down though and a scuffle at the top of the screen at the end of the play. We'll sort out this commotion. Sam Brown has his helmet off. He is red hot. And wide receiver being taken out of the game by his teammates. Uh, that's going <laughs> to, if that end up costing Houston, Dana Holgerson is going to be one livid man. Because those are the things that have plagued this team, the dumb penalties. Oh, look at this. Brown just After got three, shoved to the ground by one of his teammates. Number three, offense. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 13, defense. Excuse me, number three on the defense, number 13 on the offense. Green flushed out of the pocket. Hurdles again, and this time got walloped out of bounds. And some pushing and shoving. Uh oh, here we go. Fists are flying. This is not good. He's able to get off, walk off the field, and here it is. You can kind of see he jumped early, but he got hit out of bounds. He got hit out of bounds, and now you see here it is here. Coaches staff on the field as well. And Boy, Cam Robertson came in maybe a little late on that hit out of bounds on Green that kind of set the stage for some of that pushing and shoving. to see each other before the game, both from Australia. Oh, he's going to fake it and keep it, and why not? I mean, oh, and then a late hit. They're going to have to tack yardage on the end of this, and Crookshank is the one that hit him, and Ohio State's bench didn't take too kindly. Now you got Melton in the mix, and they're going to have to separate. Greg Schiano comes all the way over from the other sideline to get his players out of the mess. Oh, and now Schiano and Ryan Day appear to be jawing at each other. Two men who worked together here for a couple of seasons under Urban Meyer in 2017 and 2018. And I think Greg Schiano took issue with a fake punt. And I can draw it up for you. You see this overload look right here. All these guys are rushing. They've got more guys on that side crashing in than Ohio State would have been able to block over the edge anyway. It opens wide open for Mirko to run it. And the wide receiver Crookshank is now ejected from the game after the hit. And then Greg Schiano came all the way over from the Rutgers sideline to the Ohio State sideline. And they got jawed at one another. Oh, boy. Second and 15. Pressure on Borgay. He's hit, gets it off, and it's going to be intercepted. Isaiah Taylor picks it off, and that'll do it. The winless streak is over in the Territorial Cup. And now flags are out as we have a fight on the field. You just don't want to see this because some of the suspensions of guys running off the field will leak into next year. That, that, that's something that you're just not thinking about this moment. And, and both these teams have fought so hard, you do not want to see it end with, with this type of uh, display. One guy's as happy and he's not getting anything. Taylor. We're already good. I got it. The result of the play was an interception, and that play stands as called. First down. After the play, there's unsportsmanlike conduct on both teams. For Arizona, number, number four, number 56, and 98 are ejected. For Arizona State, number 28 and number two are ejected. They must leave the stadium area immediately. You see that side-to-side -side movement. Pressure up the middle. This is a bad throw from Harvard, but flags late. 
All kinds of flags in the backfield. Darius Robinson, senior, got there. And now these now Missouri players are having words. That is not what you want to see. One of the team captains. Yeah, Eli's <laughs> sh scratching his head. What is going on? Natural foul. Perfecting the passer. Number six, defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, I think I think the uh, the look from Eli Drinkwitz on the sideline really told you everything you needed to know about what just occurred there with with Robinson. McMahon on second and six. He's going to heave it to the end zone, and it is caught. Rosner has to grab it. Rice takes the lead with 25 seconds left in the fourth. McMahon goes to Rosner, and the Owls celebrate in the end zone. That's how hard yeah, it is. Yeah, we, we got a little activity down there. That's uh, what happens when, you know, as physical as this game was. The official sounds like he, he, he wasn't having a real good time in there. No. And you hate to see the emotion spill out post game like this. There, there is a part of me that does understand. I mean, this was an emotional, emotional game for for these two teams, and uh, you want to talk about a must win for both programs. And uh, you know, UTEP did so many things right in this game, but you know what? At the end of the day, Rice won. They, they made a couple more plays than you did. Walk away, shake their hand, and, and get ready for for your next game. Back 12. Nick stands in the pocket, delivers. On a crossing pattern to seven McGee. Tristan Sinclair with a tackle. Ball came out, but the play was whistled down. Next, his helmet came off, and look out here. Wow. Stanford was continuing to play, but clearly there were whistles sounded on the play, and everybody's going to have to be separated. Started with a really physical tackle from Tristan Sinclair. Flags everywhere. Runners forward progress was stopped prior to the ball coming loose. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, fighting, number seven. This player is ejected. And the ball knocked out. And then got engaged along the sideline. Take a look. And Patrick Field still with a hold of Bo Nick's helmet yeah. and then just tosses it out of the way. Maybe he could argue for safety purposes. <laughs> Probably not. But clearly Scott Satterfield had these guys with the mindset to not overlook this JMU team. Oh, look out, Cunningham lost the snap, picked it back up, and there goes three. Malik Cunningham with another magic trick, and the Whoa. fans here are used Whoa. to it. Whoa! Torres Jones took him all the way to the brick wall, and we've got extra. This could get real bad real fast. Little brouhaha, and Kirk Signetti is right in the middle of it. So first of all, how does Cunningham even do this? I mean, <laughs> lost the snap, picked it up, and found some room. Torres Jones, their top tackler, took him out of bounds, and then some. Oh, he had him out of face mask. Whoa. Ah. The plot thickens. Now, according to the NCAA rulebook, as an offensive player, you can stiff arm and you can hit the face mask but when you grab it and start to twist and turn the helmet that's when it becomes an offensive penalty after the players out of bounds personal foul flagrant personal foul number 44 defense penalty be half a distance to the goal number 44 is ejected from the ball game what do you think mike uh, i don't like it after seeing the replay
DeVito throws short. They'll pitch it back. Here's Williams, so dangerous in the open field. He's going to throw it backwards. That's well executed. Ball pops up in the air. Still a chance. Another lateral. Now it's the quarterback, DeVito. He throws it backwards. It's going to hit the turf. Scooped up by the Bulldogs. And they're going to go the other way. A touchdown. Marcus Banks on the final play of the game to cap off this win. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. And now we got a fight on the field. The very last thing we wanted after a heck of a game. There were penalty flags on the field. Presumably the touchdown's going to count, which obviously is a pretty big deal to a lot of people. It's 19 to 10 as your final score. For a while, that was about as good as you could execute a lateral play to get down the field. Uh, yeah, it looked like they had a shot at it. If uh, they could have gotten the ball to Williams one more time, but a little short and Please a great to pickup area. Please by Banks. To All right, I think we got to calm down now. That's too bad. Too bad that you have that at the end of the game, which was a, a really hard-fought, well-played game. Really. Evanston, a Northwestern team that has not won since week zero. Here's Will Levis. They don't want him to run, but he does here because he can get out of bounds. That was a big point of emphasis this week, talking with all the coaches. Will himself is with all the injuries oh. he's dealing with. And now some pushing and shoving over on the sideline at Kentucky. Extremely heated at the end of this first quarter. Trajan Jeffcoat. Went right into Levis, and the Wildcats did not like that. Can't go after the star quarterback. Boy, there is a lot of pushing, shoving. I'm not sure if we, we saw some punches thrown. These two teams, Jay, do not like one another. And there's evidence of it right there. Gone, too. <laughs> so Trajan Jeffcoat. Puts a little push on Levis. When does this thing take off? Right there. It's like it was 24 who comes in there. I don't, I don't think that was Rodriguez. I think that's the defensive back for Kentucky, Elijah Reed. There's a lot to unpack there. After the play, a sportsmanlike conduct, number 90, Missouri, his first of the game. That 15 yard field will be assessed at the end of the run. First down. Should be the final play. Three laterals make it four. Back to Martinez. Racing along the far side. Dumps it off and it's picked off and that'll do it. 24 to 21, the final score. And what a finish. Pac-12 after dark. Wins the night again for Andre Ware and Paul Carpentier. I'm Roy and Bill Platt. And there is a fight happening on the field. And that is not what you want to see after a game like that. here for a moment as things begin to settle down just a little bit. Jeremiah Martin will be escorted away from the sideline. Here's Montgomery. A pickup of a couple. Clay Johnston. Makes the stop for the Bears. And we got another fracas on the field. It looks like Chris Miller again is right there in the mix for Baylor. Oh, oh and you see there's a punch thrown. Uh, more punches thrown. Yeah. Well, he'll be gone. 
That's David Montgomery and Greg Roberts. And Greg Roberts is one of the best players on the edge for Baylor. Well, I don't think I've ever seen a police officer on the field that quickly. You know, something has to be said about this one. You know, Iowa State is one of the top ten teams in the FBS for fewest penalties, while Baylor came in ranked 90th. Let's take another look here. Here's the physical play. Blake Lynch and Butler. Oh, he put his knee into him. You see Harrison Hand come back over. And there's Roberts and Montgomery. Old best kick. And this will be returned by Joe Craig. His knee touches at the 17. And oh, penalty flags. Well, unnecessary roughness from Ole Miss. And the fight's starting to break out on the sideline. More flags flying. And the flags Still continue cut. to fly. Boy, a hair trigger. Ah, uh, that fracas. Yeah. It didn't take much at all to set the tempers off. Uh, if you want to know if Ole Miss is focused on this game and not looking ahead next week to Alabama, that's all you need to see right there. These guys are fired up and ready to play. And, of course, you don't want to see the extracurricular activity of throwing guys to the ground and getting these flags flying all over the place. But uh, they're into this football game for sure. It's not like a team that was flying out of town back in your days, Lamar. <laughs> John Petty's extra point is up and good. And uh, another melee on the field. This one is getting out of hand. Flags all over the place, and uh, this is ugly, very ugly. Gonna give it to him. Reggie Gillespie dives into the end zone. The winning points for North Carolina State. And the teams come together in the end zone, pushing, shoving between the pack and the heels as Gillespie has scored the winning points, his fifth rushing TD. But these teams need to be separated. The emotion boils over on the last play of the game as Gillespie goes to the end zone. And it's a sea of Carolina blue and state red. Well, you talked about the emotion, Tom, of both these teams and how much the rivalry means. You'd like for it not to spill over this way. Coaches in here, you see all the coaches there in the middle trying to separate the two teams.